Hey guys, Joe Sedota here. Thanks for stopping by for another video. This is the first part in a multi-part series on mixing an album. Now, mixing an album is a huge undertaking and we obviously can't do it in one video. So this is gonna be multiple parts and where we're gonna end up when this series is finished is having multiple songs from different sessions all mixed and brought together to sound cohesive as one album. So today what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first song from scratch. Okay, this is not clickbait. This is truly from scratch. You're going to hear all the raw problems with this track. We're going to go through it step by step. I'm going to stop a lot and I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And we're going to just get this to sound as good as we can. And then in future videos, we're going to use things like importing session data, using templates, things like that to get our second song started much quicker, make it sound more like the first song. So we're going to spend a lot of time on this first song, and then the second and the third song are going to go by a lot quicker. And I'm going to show you how to make that go quicker. All right, without further ado, let's dive in to Pro Tools. Okay, so let's get started by walking you through what tracks we have. We have two kicks. We have a kick in and we have a kick out, which uh, in this case, I used a sub kick. We have a snare top and a snare bottom. Those are both 57s. Hi-hat, I want to say that that's a uh, 451. I can't remember. Now the toms are samples. This recording was done a few years ago and the last time that I had it, I had replaced the tom hits with samples and I deleted the old ones. Uh, Cause if you know me, I like to just commit. Uh, so just give me some grace there, but there's literally like eight tom hits on the entire song. So I did use trigger to replace those. Other than that, keep going. We've got ride cymbal, that's a 57. Overhead mics are 414s. Room mics, I honestly can't remember what I used. Uh, it was a pair of something. I think they might have been some ribbon mics. I can't remember. Now, this is a drum verb that I tracked in the studio. There was a lexicon unit, and I really liked the uh, chamber, and I didn't want to not have it later, so I went ahead and recorded it. Then there is a simple bass DI. This bass was recorded direct from a Fender P bass. Yes, it was a P bass and a Sans Amp pedal, and that's it. And then there's a couple, three or four guitars. Uh, they were various, um, either Tele or Les Paul through probably an Orange Amp and or a Marshall. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But there you got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guitar tracks, one bass track and a partridge in a pear tree. I'm gonna show you now what I've done for just the tiniest bit of mix prep, and it's not much. It is my drum bus. So I've got my drum bus set up. I've got my drum bus uh, preset right here, drum bus strip, okay? So that always starts out the same. And then on my drum bus, I do put an L2 uh, just to catch any major overs. Uh, I hardly ever hit it but there it is. And then nothing else except for on my mix bus is just a VU meter. Boom, we'll be using that a lot. And then on the master, I've got a VU meter as well. And then the CLA mix down. This has become one of my favorite plugins for the mix bus. You, you just set it at the default with the input at zero, bass treble, glue, drive, output at zero, all buttons on. That's just how it comes. And when you're getting about minus two to minus three dB gain reduction, you know you're hitting it good and you're gonna be fine. It's gonna add that glue and it's gonna, it's gonna really kind of finalize your mix a little bit. So we're gonna be mixing into that bus compressor and we are gonna be mixing into the drum bus VMR, which as you can see here is a little bit of London saturation, but I've actually brought the mix down. And then on this API EQ, just a little bit of top end 12K, a 
little bit more crack, 3K. I'm pulling a little bit of 200 and I'm doing a, a small shelf at 100, just a tiny bit of compression. And then I'm actually using the Neve Mix Bus and I'll explain why soon. So hopefully, if my editing works correctly, you can actually see these faders. So I am going to just start from nothing. I did kind of throw it together earlier, but it doesn't matter. Oh, let me just get my drum bus back up. Kill the guitars and keep the mix bus. And that is it. Mix bus, master, and drum bus are what's up and on. Now, we have talked a lot in my videos about VU meters and trusting all that. So I'm going to bring this mix bus VU meter up. But here, let me click this, hold shift, click this guy, and then now it will stay right where we want it. Okay, this song, by the way, is called Remember. It was written by me. I apologize if you dislike it. Uh, I'm on drums and electric guitar, and the awesome Josh Hour again, is on bass guitar. So, let's press play. First things first, I'm going to bring up the overheads. Okay, and I'm going to bring up the room mics next before I bring in the kick, snare, and all that other stuff. Okay, let's talk for a second about perspective. Is it audience perspective or drummer perspective? Which is right? Which should you use? The answer is it doesn't matter. What you need to do is make for certain when you're listening to the overheads or the room mics is which way is left, which way is right, which way is you know the hi-hat and where is the ride? How do the toms, do they go this way or do they go this way? And so once you've determined that, you can then make a decision of whether you want audience perspective or drummer perspective, but you gotta listen to the overheads in the rooms first. So I'm gonna show you, um, I, I mean, I know this, but let's, let's listen to a, uh, a quick little tom fill here maybe, and I'm gonna solo just the overheads. Uh, you'll notice that I've actually already named them uh, overhead hat and overhead ride. I did the wrong thing. It's because I know that this is the overhead that's over the hat side of the kit, and this is the overhead that's over the ride side of the kit. Now, I do that, so it's not left or right, because sometimes you don't know. Left, but is it the hi-hat side or the ride side? Is the drummer left-handed? Is the drummer right-handed? So I tend to just kind of go in and say um, overhead hat, overhead ride. This lets me know if I decide later 
to swap panning, I know which overhead mic is which. Uh, does that make sense? I do the same thing, room hat, room ride. So let's listen to the overheads on this drum fill and see if we can notice any panning. Sorry, that turned it up for me and not for you. One more time. Okay, I can hear that the tom is going from my left to my right, which on video is backwards, but you get it. So I've got the pan correct. I've got I've got the hi hat side left. I've got the over the the right side right. So I'm going with drummer's perspective. Hi hats on the left. Rack tom is on his left or my left in this case because it was me. Floor tom and overheads and so on and so forth. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, help if I start from the top. Let's loop that again and we'll start bringing in, this is just, we're just putting faders up. So let's, let's bring up the bass now. Here's a trick, you ready? Since we have our VU meter up, this is gonna be very helpful. I'm gonna solo the kick. In this case, I'm gonna solo both kicks because the bottom end information matters in this trick. I'm gonna solo the kicks and press play. I'm gonna notice where that's hitting on the VU meter. Then I'm gonna bring up the bass until with the bass and the kicks, it's now three dB louder with the bass than it was with just the kicks. So in this case, Let's see where the kicks land. Okay, that was somewhere between minus seven and, uh, and five, which means when we add the bass, we should be at least two or even one. Six, five, four, yeah, four to one. So you see what I've done? Solo the kicks again, bring in the bass. It's now hitting that minus one, which is about three or four dB louder than the kicks by themselves. Here's one more time without the bass. And with the bass. Okay, that doesn't mean that that's the perfect spot for your bass, leave it, set it and forget it, never come back, but it is a great starting point to get you within a couple dB or so of where it probably ought to be sitting. And I know that is a tough one, is how to get that bass guitar right. So, moving on. I'm not gonna get started on the whole, should you mix in mono, should you mix in stereo thing. I will though say this, if I'm listening in mono, how do I know if guitar one is louder than guitar two when they're a stereo pair, I want them to be the same level, but it's, it's the same tone, the same amp, but two different performances. One is pan left, one is pan right to give us that stereo wide vibe, vibe, feeling, vibe. But, so I've got to listen in stereo to know whether guitar one or guitar two are even the same volume. Does that make sense? All right.
right, let's get to where these other guitars come in. I should add, so I've already got these panned way, the way I want them, but we can pan them straight up and and let's just, let's see, uh, guitar six, seven, eight, all pan straight up. So let's listen and I'll kind of show you why I decided to pan them how I pan them. Uh, let's listen to this spot. Okay, one is fast, eighth notes. The other one is whole notes, just ringing out. So I, I want them to be separate. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna pan one one way, pan one the other. I tend to just pan pretty hard. So that's what I do. Let's listen. So that's just a little motif thing there. So I'm gonna leave that up the middle. So I'm gonna have driving on one side, I'm gonna have whole notes on the other side, I'm gonna have the, the little, uh, I wouldn't call it a solo, whatever it is, cause I can't play solos, that's for dang sure. Anyways, I'm gonna put that up the middle. Sometimes it helps if, you know, I mean, obviously in the whole mix of things, it, it's more important that you get it right. But sometimes when you're dealing with this little section that's separate, like these tracks here are all by themselves. They're kind of just a thing. I'll, I'll get a good blend of them by themselves first, and then I'm probably going to group them since this is the bridge. So let's try that. Let's kind of get a good blend of these, and then I'll group them, and then we can turn up that whole group compared to the rest of the song. Okay, I like that. So let's select those three. I need to move this mouse. Voila, Command G. Group, I'm gonna call them Bridge Guitars. Okay. Now, when I lower them, they lower together. Let's find that spot in the mix now again. Small tip, did you know that once you've got something in group, if you hold down uh, op, no, sorry, control, you can move just one thing in the group and keep the other relative volume. So I'm gonna hold group and turn down that little single note thing just a hair. Sorry, hold control. Here we go. And that's all the tracks. So we'll go back to uh, this chorus. I'm gonna go to the outro so I can listen to these toms here and get a good level on that. Let's listen at this drum fill. Keep in mind now, we're just getting some basic levels. All right, there's things I'm hearing already that I don't like. I think the room mics are too bright. There's not enough beef in the kick. The snare needs to be thicker, but I'm just kind of laying the groundwork. I 
I definitely thought the overheads were too hot or at least too much symbol, so I lowered those a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm gonna save that. Command S is your best friend. Now, I'm gonna put the soft tube console one on all these tracks, and we're gonna start to use that as our base EQ and compression. And then if we want some, some more subtle things or some different flavors of things, we can do that. But I always start with my soft tube console one in the SSL 4K mode. I'm gonna select all the tracks that I want that plug in to be on. I'm gonna hold shift. I selected the last one, held shift, press the first one. Now, since these are selected, if I hold alt shift and then put in a plugin, it'll put them on all of them that are selected. Okay, that's alt shift if you want just the ones that are selected. Holding down alt and clicking it will put in a plugin on every track. So <clears throat> I happen to have, if you notice here, there's some favorites. Pro Tools calls it a, a favorite, I think. I, I can't remember what they call it, but um, I've got my virtual mix rack. It's, oh, it's, that's what it is. It's like your go-to EQ and your go-to compressor or dynamics. Well, I've chosen console one and virtual mix rack. So they're always there. So all I have to do, because I've saved that as one of my favorite, my favorite EQ, it is going to insert a mono version on a mono track and a stereo version on a stereo track. And that's important. That's a huge time saver. Like, subscribe for that tip right there. Otherwise, you got to go in and you got to put a mono on a mono track and a stereo on a stereo track. So I'm going to hold Alt Shift and click the second insert point in console one. Why the second insert point? Well, I want it to be the first thing, but what if for some reason I want to do something to a track before it hits the SSL? So I put it on the second insert point. So just in case if I want something before that, maybe it's a trim or maybe it's just a real crazy EQ or something or an effect, um, I might want that before console one. So I've decided to put that insert on the second slot. Okay, here's what that looks like. We've got kick, sub kick, you know, there, snare hat, you got it. There's all the tracks. So right now everything is flat and off. So I've got this window where we can see what it's doing and we've got our VU meter still. At this point, it doesn't matter that I can't see the tracks. Does that make sense? Because I, I'm just listening. So now I'm gonna go back through the song and let's do one or two passes and let's start doing some things to the tracks to make it sound better. Always check whether your main kick and your second kick are in phase or not. So I'm going to do that. They are in phase, so I don't need to invert that. Keep going. Definitely gonna need to compress the kick. I'm gonna do that though while it's in the mix.
There's lots of reasons why, but one of the main reasons why I love the SSL compressor is there's no makeup gain. It just automatically turns it up as loud as it needs. So you just bring it in a compression and you just go with it. I'm doing slowest attack, fastest release, a very low ratio. I just want some of those attacks to, to sit a little bit more consistent. And now I am moving on. I'm gonna tackle these uh, room mics because I think they're gonna be, they're gonna play the biggest part in what I'm not liking. Right off the bat, I'm just gonna go ahead and high cut them, but here, here's, let's listen to just one of them. I'll pan it up the middle, soloed. So why am I darkening it up? Well, these room mics that were used are picking up lots of cymbal. They were probably too high in the room. I probably should have put them lower. Point is, I got plenty of sizzle from the overheads. I want the rooms to be a little bit more fat, a little more bombastic, and a little darker and a little less cymbal. So I'm just gonna cut it. Now's a good time to mention that the drive defaults, I have it set at 5.5. So I'm already adding drive, which is distortion. But um, they say that when it's at five, it emulates more closely what the console sounds like. So you can actually be cleaner than the SSL, but why would I want that? I wanna be at least as dirty as the SSL. So that's all. And then the character of the drive, you can either go brighter or darker depending on what you're going for and it'll basically add harmonics more to the top end or more to the bottom end. I tend to just leave it around five and character at zero unless something stands out as funky. Okay, I'm just gonna go with that. Just simple low cut. I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm gonna copy to 12, boom. See how fast that was? I just copied EQ. Matter of fact, the whole channel strip. Love it. All right, unsolo that. Keep listening. There's nothing below there, obviously, you can see, but I'm just putting the high pass. The high pass is your best friend. I'm just putting it there just in case. But obviously, there's not even information below that amount. So it's just a safety precaution. All right, let's add some dirt and some grit to the base. Okay, that's good, but it's not enough. 
So I am going to, sorry for the squeaky chair. Now there's lots of ways that we could do some stuff to the base. We could duplicate it and have this one and have, have a second one. Um, this base is pretty clean. It sounds good. I just want a little bit more oomph to it. So uh, let's see, let's go plug in, let's go with Sheps. Sheps is good because of the saturation and the different compressor modes and stuff like that. So let's add some saturation to the bass. Slap of the bass, man. So we're hitting the output too hot now because of the saturation and a little bit of EQ I just did. So I'm going to bring the output down. Okay, and last but not least, I'm going to put, don't hate me for it, I'm going to put some chorus on El Beso. Uh, let's see, what do I got? Modulation, do I have some chorus? Let's see how this one. Always start with a preset. Uh, deep chorus, yeah, let's try that. And then we'll adjust, we'll mess with the mix. I think that little bit of chorus is going to stand out and do what I want it to do. Let's hear what that sounds like. I'm going to check the kick and the bass thing again. Now that I've messed with the bass, I wanna see where I'm at on that VU meter check. So it's hitting as high as minus three. So when I add the bass, the VU meter should hit at least zero or maybe even plus one. I think that 3K was uh, making it making it cut too much and was kind of messing with the level, so I brought that back down. Um, I might add some more bottom in later, but I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm also going to change this. I want to put the multi-chorus before the ships uh, so that I can grit out the chorus a little bit more. Okay, makes sense? All right, and then I'm going to maybe mess with this limiter here.
Okay, I think what it is is I'm not digging the the uh, console one compressor on this bass for whatever reason. So let's move this all down one and let's see what we can do. Um, before I go to the ships, I want to I want to try a different compressor, and I'm gonna go virtual mix rack in this case, and I'm gonna kill everything, get rid of all this junk. Sorry, let me use this mouse. I use both mice. Does that matter? Mouses, mooses. And let's try the distressor. And I'm going to put it in uh, opto mode. See what that does. See what I'm doing? I'm bypassing and unbypassing it, making sure that I've got the output set right. Gotta do it. Okay. Uh, all the guitars themselves sound fine, really, individually. There's nothing bad but I kind of want to just give a little bit more umph to them. So I'm just going to create a group real quick. So let's do that. Let's uh, command shift in. I want one stereo aux input and I'm going to call it uh, guitar bus. Is it two S's or one S? I never know. Uh, guitar bus. Okay, let's have its input come from, uh, let's see, oh, let's call it, how about guitar bus? And then it's going to go out the mix bus. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take all, let's see, guitar eight through guitar one, shift, click, option shift, holding that down and switching it from the mix bus to the guitar bus. Now we're going to hear them through the guitar bus. I'm going to go ahead and put the console one on that. I want to point this out. Getting it right at the source is so important. You notice how I'm not having to get rid of a bunch of junk that's in the guitars because I high passed them when they were tracked. Always be thinking about the mix. Don't, don't wait to do it later. If you know you're going to high pass guitars later and you're tracking the guitars, just high pass it. Or, or don't. Whatever you know that you don't want to do or whatever you do want to do in the mix, don't wait to do it later. Just commit to it. Do it right then. Capture what you want. Always be working on your mix, even as you're tracking your album. All right, keep going. Okay, I'm noticing that on the VU meter, our mix is starting to get a little bit hot. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select all my faders. I'm in the all group now. And remembering, though, that the buses need to stay at zero, but I'm going to go ahead for now with everything selected. I'm going to bring them down 3 dB. Okay. Then I'm going to turn off the group. And I'm going to hold option, and I'm going to re put the the buses where they need to be at zero 
I'm holding option and I'm moving the fader and it's jumping back to zero. So ultimately what we've just done is we've lowered everything 3 dB. I think the attack kick, the inside kick, is too hot and it's making the bass seem not loud enough. Is it that the whole kick needs to be brought down or do I just need to lower the attack of the EQ that I added? I'm just going to mess with that and see what happens. In this case, I definitely think it was too much attack and it, we pro I don't remember what mic I used. It might have been like a 441. Um, I just really can't remember. Um, nevertheless, by lowering the attack, I was able to actually get more umph from the kick by turning it up quite a bit, but yet now that, that attack isn't, making, uh, isn't standing out so much and annoying me. Okay, now I think the drums need a lot of work still. So I'm going to create a parallel compression aux, or call it lateral compression, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to add some grit and some thickness and some angst to the drums. So let's do that. You know, before I do the parallel compression, I, you know, I made a video recently about mixing quiet. I'm just going to actually take a measurement while I'm mixing this song, and I'm, I'm using the uh, Studio 6 SPL meter on my iPhone 11. I know it's not 100% accurate, but just save, save me the, the hassle of commenting that that's not an accurate SPL meter. Um, I'm just going to give you as a reference of kind of how loud I'm mixing right now. So I'm going to press play. So that's pretty much my loudest, 80 dB. That is loud for me. Um, but it's not 90. And that is C weighted. This is A weighted. Okay, more like 65 A weighted. So that's just the more you know. All right, back at it. Let's create a drum sub slam bus. Command shift in one stereo aux input. And we're going to call this, let's just call it slam. Now, wouldn't you know it? I happen to have a preset for a slam bus. Uh, not how much drums are going into it, but just the plugins that I want to use. So I'm going to right click. And I'm going to recall preset, go to my SS mixing and slam bus. Okay. And all it is, is the VMR with more drive, more distortion, more compression, more EQ, and then a bus thing. All right. I'm not even going to look at that, but if you want to know, I'm adding a little bit of 10 K, a little bit of 4.5, a little bit of 50 or 60 or somewhere like that. Um, and I don't want that. I want that. I need to fix that. Okay. Now let's flip over to here and set the input is already set because it's part of my, my recall. So slam bus, I'm going to send, uh, I'm going to send both kicks at zero. I'm just actually, no, I'm going to go minus 10, hold option, click and drag that. Now that one's at minus 10, just like the first one. And let's go snare top at zero 
I'm not going to add the bottom snare or the hat. I am going to do the toms, option, click, drag for tom one and for tom two. I'm not going to do the overheads and the rooms either. So we're just talking about kick, snare, toms, and uh, let's see what that does. I'm going to lower the slam fader and bring up the plug in and let's see what we got. So I'm going to go ahead and put these at zero. I'm holding option, click that because I want more. And I am going to put a little bit of room. Now that I've got uh, those tamed, I will, but I am going to lower those to minus 10 because I just need more angst from the drums. So I might actually on this song, because it's more aggressive rock, I might tweak my slam bus. So let's do that. Okay, let's hear it without that, and then we'll hear it with, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna lower everything again because we're hitting past, we're getting into the red on the VU meter on the master bus, mix bus. So let's see what it sounds like with and without. Definitely better with, uh, so we'll leave that. Hey, let's save, Command S. Uh, that'd be smart. Let's see if we can't mess with the snare, get a little bit thicker. What I'm about to do is add bottom end to the bottom snare mic. And it might you might think, why would you add bottom to something that's just crispy? It really, with combined with the top snare, it really can be a nice thickening agent. And it doesn't get rid of the sizzle that you still have. So I'm gonna be careful not to high pass the bottom snare too high. I don't care that kick is bleeding through. Now, if you wanted, you could put a gate on the bottom snare. I don't really care that it's there. It's natural. It's real. So let's see what that sounds like now. Have we helped the snare in the grand scheme of things?
a little bit, but not enough. And I think the culprit is going to be our overheads. Let's EQ the overheads specifically to try and make the snare sound fatter. And it's going to make the snare sound fatter. Does that make sense? All right, let's overhead hat, overhead ride. Let's solo those and let's see what we can do. <laughs> Okay, I've got that panned left back now. So let's copy that to 10 and let's solo those together now in stereo, just the overheads. Let's see if that helps with the snare. I'll play it with this EQ on and with this EQ off. definitely helps. I think it's subtle, but I think it helps. I'm also going to turn up the reverb. Let's listen to that reverb and see if we can make the snare come through thicker there. This is all before I've even considered should I add a snare sample. And we're going to actually do that on the next video. So make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you are getting notified. Hit the bell so that you know when the next video comes out where we're going to keep moving forward on this song, but we're going to add a snare sample. And I think that I might go ahead and duplicate the bass. It's just not aggressive enough. It's not taking up enough space. And I think if we duplicate it and maybe put an amp sim on it, I think we can get it a little bit more what I'm hearing, which is growlier and more in your face. So, um, but let's, let's, before we do that, before we finish out this video, let's listen to the snare that's coming in through the drum verb and see if we can't manipulate that a little bit.
I wasn't liking what it was doing to the snare, but man, did I like what it was doing to the kick drum. So happy surprise. So I'm just shifting that like that. A little less top, a little more bottom, um, you know, and uh, I think that'll bring out some nice, some nice space. Okay. I think we've gotten where we need to get so far for part one. We have... EQ'd, compressed a little bit. We've got a slam bus going. We haven't really gotten into any effects yet. I think maybe I'll show you on the next video um, a different drum reverb, kind of how I might decide what to send to which reverb. Um, and like I said, we're gonna duplicate the bass and we're gonna do some more work on then now maybe adding a snare sample. I think the kick is sounding great. Uh, so those are the things we're gonna continue to work on in the next video. All right, guys, I hope that this video is what you were looking for. I hope that you said, finally, a video that's out there that goes step by step and shows me exactly what, what to do. Now, we're not even close to being finished. We've merely scratched the surface. So please don't think that I'm saying that this song is fully finished and mixed and it's, and it's, it's not. We're going to come back in part two and keep working on it until we're really happy with the mix. And there's lots more to do. So please, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button, make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when I release new videos so that you don't miss out on part two. All right, guys, I really appreciate your time. Have a great week.